excited for our group of panelists today. Shamika Meadows, Recruiting Manager, Luke Beaster, Skillbridge Coordinator, Joe Principata, Senior Technical Recruiter, Will Heierholzer, Recruiter, and Robert McNabb, Military and Veteran Recruiter, all with KBR. KBR has a long history of hiring and working side by side with the military veterans and their families. We know that the veteran community is a huge one on clearancejobs.com. We get a ton of questions about career opportunities for veterans. KBR is here to answer those for you today. They have a lot of career opportunities, um, a lot of options for you. And so we really wanna take the time to kind of get you um, launched on your career journey, learn more about KBR and their career opportunities um, and learn more about um, what the company is like really with a boots on the ground perspective. So again, I'm so grateful to our panelists for their agility, their willingness to be with us today and come alongside us, even as we have um, a few technical issues. But again, for the audience here, what you still have is a panel full of experts and great expertise and a great introduction um, and more steps on how to launch and take off and expand your career with KBR. So on that note, I wanted to start with you, Shamika. So I wanted to get your perspective. What has it been like um, since joining KBR and give a little bit more about your career journey? Oh, thanks, Lindy. Um, it's it's actually been a really amazing, awesome experience for me. Um, I've been with the company since 2005, um, shortly after getting out of the Army, and um, had a, I'm going to say, an interesting journey along the way. I started out um, overseas contracting, working in that realm, um, atmosphere, and then came back home stateside to um, work in the Houston downtown. Yeah, downtown Houston office. And then um, I've just progressed my career um, throughout this time uh, being with the company from starting as an admin to now the uh, recruiting manager here. Awesome. And so highlight some of KBR's inclusion and diversity initiatives, if you could. Sure. Um, I'd say um, with, with the recruiting team leading um, the inclusion and diversity initiatives, um, we've launched, you know, several employee resource groups. Um, it's been very beneficial with us um, having, you know, internally building meaningful connections to the employees that we normally don't interact with on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, we've also partnered and participated with different organizations to attract top talent, um, like the SkillBridge program that we'll be talking about today and then other organizations uh, such as NSBE, um, which is the National Society for Black Engineers, um, SWE, which is the Society for Women Engineers, and other um, for engineering opportunities, and then other outreach like Catalyst, Amy, and then Disability In. Awesome, and Shamika tied to our next question perfectly. So my next question is for Luke. I wanted to pivot to you and see if you could tell us a little bit more about KBR's participation in the SkillBridge program. Yeah, thanks for the question. So uh, this is Luke Bister. I'm the SkillBridge coordinator here at KBR. Um, and you know, we <clears throat> KBR saw value in the SkillBridge program about three years ago when uh, people like Shamika and Joe. Um, th the thing is, they were kind of they were dual hatted. They were doing two different jobs, right? So they were able to still bring people on, but they weren't able to give it their full attention, right? So, um, and, and not not their fault, right? They had a full workload of, of open positions they were trying to fill for KBR. So uh, in January of 2022, when I was looking for a skill bridge opportunity, actually Joe, you guys will meet Joe here in a minute, he gave me a call because I went through the Hiring Our Heroes program. So he got a list with my name on it and I'll share a little bit more about my background um, a little bit later on in the webinar, but um, I was retiring from the Air Force in the recruiting world, and he called me and asked if I'd like to officially um, participate my skill bridge with KBR and stand up KBR skill bridge program. So I've been here since January of 2022, and uh, we've been able to partner with a lot of the nonprofit organizations, some of those uh, like Hiring Our Heroes, Next Op, 50 Strong, uh, in countless military taps and education offices across the country and overseas. Fantastic. So talk to me a little bit about that. So you actually launched the KBR SkillBridge program. Why does a company like KBR do something like SkillBridge? Kind of what are, what's the engagement that you have and how does it benefit you as a company and not just the candidates? 
Sure. So it's it's definitely a two way street. You know, it's a um, it's something where, you know, in there's a lot of value in it because we're looking to hire military talent as they transition because we're a defense contracting company, right? So um, a lot of the jobs that the service members were doing while they were in the military, well, that's what we have open recs for. So we want to bring them on. So I always kind of try to, I recently retired from the Air Force, so I know what it's like to retire and transition. It can be challenging, right? So I try to streamline the process and make it as easy as possible to where if we have an open position, well, well it's a skill bridge opportunity because whatever your skill bridge window looks like, if it's 60 days or 160 days, it doesn't matter to us because we're not trying to make this any more difficult for anybody. We're trying to help make the landing out of the, the military soft. We're trying to help ease the transition. So we've been able to do that. And last year, uh, if you break down our numbers in 2022 alone, uh, individuals that started the program and ended in the calendar year 2022, there was 36 of them total. Out of the 36, we offered 33 a job and we hired 29 of them. So that's an 81% conversion rate. But something that I want to point out to all the service members that are on, you know, that number, I think that that's a good number, but also something to factor in is you don't, you're not on military orders anymore. So you can go work for whatever company you want. You can take a break. You can not work. You're, you're done. You're not on orders anymore. So for 36 individuals to trust KBR to partner with us as they transition out of the service, for us to hire 29 of them and have an 81% conversion rate, I think that's a success in itself. So that's a little bit about like how KBR has benefited pro from the program, but also as a whole, since I've been here 15 months, we partnered with over a hundred transitioning service members. So I'm uh, really excited for the program and it's, and it's a good partnership for the service member as well as KBR. And I love that you're highlighting, we get a ton of questions from candidates over at Clearance Jobs. Hey, who has the SkillBridge program? How do I get engaged? It sounds like KBR has a robust program. Um, you know what you're doing around it and you're ready to help, you know, veterans transition and move into those opportunities. Um, so I wanted to have, my next question goes to Rob. I got there. So Robert, question for you. So how did you convert your military skill set? That's a common question we get, again, at Clearance Jobs, that military translation um, transition piece of it. How do you transition your skills to help you get a job in the civilian sector? Lindy, that, that's a great question. And um, as a service member, uh, transitioning at the peak of COVID uh, from Fort Hood, uh, pretty much all Fort Hood uh, shut down um, all their services. And it was rather difficult, um, you know, doing being in the military for 23 years in the military jargon. Um, that we use on a daily basis um, is the key to try to get rid of on our, our resume. So <clears throat> trans, uh, your military skill set to civilian sector jobs, um, and many companies have this as well. KBR does have it. If you go to uh, kbr.com slash careers, um, our careers page, and on top you will see working at KBR, click on that link and look for military. Um, when you click on the military, what you, what you will see is a military skills translator. Um, you can use that. You can put your MOS in there, and then what it would do, it would um, match you to jobs that are in the civilian sector with KBR. Uh, that's one of the tools that you can use. Also on that website, uh, you'll see our training and partners uh, to include information on the KBR DOD Skill Bridge program. Um, so let's talk a little bit about uh, transitioning the, that skill set to the civilian sector. Um, sometimes you may not need to transmit, uh, translate too much on your resume, especially if you're going back into the defense industry. Uh, defense industry resumes, they want to know very detailed about every single thing that you've done in the military. Uh, but if you're changing career fields completely and say you are a 19 kilo tank crew member, um, start looking for positions with, with heavy equipment operator. Um, if you're uh, planning on staying with the same career field, uh, say you were a combat medic, uh, the career field that your career field that you're looking for on the civilian side will be the the health care specialist roles. Um, another example, <clears throat> a 92 Alpha in the Army is automated uh, logistics spe uh, specialist, and they manage and supervise uh, warehouse operations. Um, 
So when applying to civilian careers, take that experience you gained from the military and use the quantifiable uh, experience to create that resume and avoid that military jargon. Um, Wait, you mean not everybody speaks acronyms, Robert? Are you saying not, we have to speak? <laughs> not everybody and not all branches speak the same acronyms either. So I, I can be looking at Joe's prior Air Force and he can have all that Air Force jargon in there. And I, as a recruiter and veteran, I still might not know what he's talking about. So it's key and instrumental because you're not always going to get that that veteran recruiter that knows what your MOS and exactly what you've done in the military. You know, I totally get that and I love that. And I want to talk, so my next question too, kind of ties into that. So talk about networking in your in your job search. So it really is about relationship building with the recruiters, with folks that are already in these companies. How does networking play a role in a, in a job search especially for that military transition community? Network, networking plays a huge role. Um, as you as you get to meet each and every single one of us on the call, we touched base somewhere down the line uh, prior to all working for KBR or working with KBR. We kind of knew each other, uh, so that helps. But even um, finding finding find yourself a mentor, uh, someone who is not going to sugarcoat and will give you the hard truth. Um, Mentors are norm normally someone you can trust and have been in the specialty field that you're trying to get into for several years. Um, and just keep in mind, they're not your friend. They're going to be the ones that are going to give you that that tough love, uh, guide you in the right way, help you with certifications, um, review your resume. Um, and LinkedIn and other social media sites are ideal ways to find a mentor. Um, reach out to fellow veterans in similar career fields and, and connect with them. Uh, ask them. Uh, to review your resume, ask for guidance. Uh, just keep in mind you're not alone. There's very many, many veterans um, out there that can help you. There's also uh, many state uh, agencies to help transitioning service members, military spouses, and veterans. Use them. They're free of charge uh, with your transition. Um, one of the things uh, as far as networking, what I did when I was in the job search, um, I would uh, apply to a position uh, with an organization and then hop on LinkedIn, find out every human resource manager, anybody had HR in their title, and I would message them through LinkedIn saying, hey, my name is Robert McNabb. I applied to this uh, position. I'm a recently transitioned service member. Uh, can you look at my resume? Um, that, that's one of the ways to get you um, connected on LinkedIn. No, I love that. And I, I talk about that all the time with this process. I think it is a process that favors the persistent. The government contracting kind of rotation, the way it works is there are opportunities today and they change tomorrow. So just because you're not a fit for a position or you don't get a call back today or you don't get that contact or connection, keep trying, keep pursuing, especially if there's a company that you're targeting like KBR and you really want to be there, um, keep building out that network and, and it will pay off down the road, I generally find. So my next question is for you, Will, and maybe it ties into to our last response there, but how did you get your start with KBR and talk about your career journey? Hey, thanks for the question, Lindy. It's a, it's actually a really good question, and and I think I'm probably the, the most excited person on this webinar, and the reason being is I just retired. I picked up my retired ID uh, just a couple of weeks ago, and, and I've had a, a great time transitioning. I look forward to, uh, to passing on some of that knowledge on things to do and things not to do uh, to the people that are listening in. So I joined KBR through Hiring Our Heroes and uh, and that's a great organization in order to, that, that will let you get your foot into the door of some of these companies. So I, I go back to what Mac was talking about whenever he was talking about networking. I've known Luke Bister for about 10 years. I went through recruiting school with Luke um, and we kept in touch and I knew that he was working for, for KBR as a skill bridge coordinator. So whenever it was my turn to, to start really looking into what I wanted to do, I gave Luke a call and I was like, Hey man, do we, uh, do you have any positions over there? And he was like, of course, you know, and I did hiring my, uh, hiring our heroes and skill bridge through KBR. Once my skill bridge was completed, I really, um, saw that, that the skills that I learned in the military were very easily translated over into to KBR and they I mean they welcomed me with open arms they allowed me to do a bunch of the stuff that I needed to still do while I was transitioning out VA appointments things of that nature but yeah I'm glad to be here and I look forward to being uh, with KBR for a very long time 
I love it. I will challenge you for most excited to be on the call. I will say, will you get the most excited KR person on the call, but I'm always the most excited person on the call. Um, but no, I think that ties into a question that we got from Name on here. And he had asked if there um, is any preference for referrals in the system and specifically asked if you don't have a referral into a company, can you still be considered? I want to generally say the short answer is yes, you're still going to be considered. But Shamika, maybe could I ask you to weigh in on that? Like, if you is there a different process if you're referred into a company or into the program how does that work and again maybe kind of also you know uh, assuage the concerns of those folks who might say hey i don't have a referral into this company can i still get a position sure um so the short answer is yes you can still be considered um yes you will still be considered um, the team, uh, I have a team of probably 17, 18 recruiters now, and we get applications all day, every day, hundreds of them. But the team works tirelessly um, to go through each of the qualified applicants to make sure that we're submitting all qualified applicants to the hiring managers for review and consideration. Um, it is good to have those connections to maybe get yourself ahead of the line, but the recruiters are reviewing all, all applicants for qualifications to submit over to the hiring managers. Awesome. And then again, I would just, yeah, again, pivot that name to say the persistence piece is key. So if you don't have that referral now, it doesn't mean you wouldn't down the road. So keep contacting and reaching out to the company, attending webinars like this, engaging um, in ways like this is a really great way to get your foot in the door um, and to keep engaged with the company and to find you know different opportunities to land the position that you're interested in and i also so i want to pivot my next question to you again will um so talk about being kind of recently transitioned what is maybe it's fresh on your mind so what are some some things that made you more successful transitioning into a new job yeah thanks for thanks for that question as well and to to just kind of piggyback on what you were talking about a few minutes ago even though you don't have the referrals uh, or if you don't have a referral, reach out to all the recruiters here on this on this page. Find us on LinkedIn. Let us know you applied. Um, we'll help you in any way that we can. And um, if you're qualified for that position, we're going to really take a, a deep dive look at you, and and we're going to give you that that chance that you're looking for because because you deserve it. I mean, you're you're applying for a reason, and um, not only did you serve our country, we uh we enjoy what we do, and we love helping out vets. So to move on to the question that you asked, my my transition was was different than than most uh, most of the vets that I hear. Like, yes, it was stressful. Um, I had uh, a lot of things to do just like anybody else that's out there listening that's transitioning or about to transition or has already transitioned. So my success really stemmed from being with a company that, that truly values and understands what a transitioning service member is actually going through. And KBR really jumped ahead whenever it came to that. KBR alongside hiring our heroes helped me by allowing the requirements for transition to not be so stressful. And what I mean by that is all of my VA appointments, all of my uh, out processing appointments, anything that I still that was still mandatory for me to complete, I routed that stuff up to to a great leader like Shamika, and she was she was able to um, give me that time to take care of that stuff because they because we as KBR understand that you not only had you served your country, you were also making a huge transition into a civilian life. And that's not always easy to do. We wanna help out any way we can. And another reason that I was successful is because KBR gave me the reins to use my skills that I learned in the military. And they give me the opportunity to be creative in the job that, I, that I'm in and do the job like I know how to do it instead of having a, a specific way to do it. So that was what really made me successful whenever it came to transitioning into uh, to KBR. I love that. And now we get to talk about a, a hot topic and a, a popular one for me, the boomerang employee, Joe. And so somebody threw you under the bus and said that you were a KBR boomerang employee. You left and decided to come back. Um, so Joe, can you talk about that a little bit? Kind of um, what made you decide to come back after taking a stint somewhere else? Absolutely. Thanks, Lindy. So my path, like so many other KBR employees, I started out as a referral from a current employee. I was not familiar with KBR, but was very interested once I learned about the culture, which kind of closely related to the military and their p p pillars of success. 
So I was impressed with how many veterans were working within our company. And for me, I was able to jump into a recruiting role. My first task was to set up the SkillBridge program. So we became an authorized SkillBridge provider and that helped us expand our military market because we would send all the recruiters and I did the same thing we're asking you to do. I jumped on LinkedIn, I friend requested military recruiters to see who were working with transition service members to see if they would be interested in looking at KBR first. So that was one of my first tasks is to set up a military network. So it, it ended up being every Monday, I would send out all our jobs to 39 bases across the world that every Monday they would get all our KBR openings. And then we started getting people applying for those positions based on their military specialties and their skills. So that allowed me to be successful, the training I had in the military, the connection that I made through LinkedIn and through the military. And with that success, I was headhunted by a different company that was looking to get into the military space and they wanted someone to come in and set up their skill bridge program as well. So I was hired as a senior technical recruiter. I went there, got their skill bridge set up, but the, the jobs they asked me to fill and the jobs I actually ended up filling were totally different. There were very few military people. They were low skill, most of them under two years experience. So I left this great KBR company where I was dealing with veterans that had between four and 30 years service and then went and really, I was lucky if I talked to one military person a week. So when an opportunity came up to come back to KBR, I jumped on it right away. I contacted a different division. So I worked for a different part of KBR and asked if I could you know, come back and be a recruiter for KBR again. And I was thankful they said yes. I love it. And can we tell you, a lot of you have talked about connecting with folks and reaching out on LinkedIn. And I do think it's worth noting here, that's where some of those kind of having a, a bit of a, a soft touch or a little bit of soft skills applied to that can make a big difference. So what I find, if, you, if you're connecting with these folks here, Joe, you're fantastic. I'm going to be connecting with you on LinkedIn following this. I'm going to say, hey, Joe, I saw you speak at the KBR Clearance Jobs webinar. I think those kind of connections are more likely to get a recruiter to accept it than just if you send a recruiter a message that says, hey, I need a job. Can I, maybe, can you speak to that? How does a person like kind of present themselves to a recruiter in a way that says, hey, I, I want to make a connection and it's, I want a meaningful connection and not just a transactional one. Does that make sense? Absolutely. So I think I probably speak for everyone here. We're recruiters because we like to help people. We like to help people get jobs. Um, the worst thing we have to do is tell someone, I'm sorry, you weren't selected. Now, KBR is lucky enough to have thousands of jobs open across the world. So there's positions open. So it's a great pairing that if you have the skill set, we have the job open, let's make a match. But that starts with you being qualified. So I would say the, the biggest thing is have a good resume, make sure you're qualified for the position, and sit down and just take a few minutes of the recruiter's time and they can kind of go through your background and say, yeah, I think you'd be a great fit. And if you are a great fit, then we'll forward your resume along with our notes right to the hiring manager and, and help streamline this process. Yeah, it is like recruiters want to help. And I think, you know, companies like KBR are really good about if you don't have an opportunity now, you you do try to be transparent with a candidate about that, about timelines, even about I know the recruiter network is strong. So folks will reach out. Hey, I don't have an opportunity today, but another company that I know does. So it is great to be proactive, to reach out and know that exactly like you said, Joe, recruiters love helping people and want to help candidates. I want to ask about timelines a little bit, Joe, and I was hoping you could speak to this. So. From the military transition perspective, um, if you're transitioning to civilian law, like when is it a good job to start looking for positions, kind of timelines, transition timelines, what advice would you have on that? And then if anybody else on the call, I know we have you know, several folks who have recently transitioned. If you have advice or insights into those timelines, I'd love to hear about that as well. So I would say about 13 to 14 months before you're separating, get your resume together, find your mentor. I think Mac mentioned that and start your process of where you want to look. 
the the company you choose is also very important because of the size of the company matters. If they're if you're looking into coming into the defense contracting and they have one or two contracts, when that contract ends, you're going to start your process all over again. And I think that's what puts KBR ahead of a lot of the other companies. We're in so many different countries. We have so many different positions. Like just in Dayton alone, we have 600 full-time employees. And one of our business units, as soon as you start, if you do not have a security clearance, they put you in for a top secret. Because if you're cleared and a different contract opens up, we can slide you in there. And another great thing about KBR is we have a, a mobility team so if you do lose coverage or the contract ends, you can actually sit down with one of our internal recruiters. They'll look at your resume, ask you to update it for what you've done at KBR and try to get you on a different contract. And we have a weekly call where all the directors and all the recruiters sit on it. And if anybody's losing coverage, we actually talk about that person and the directors and the managers can say, oh, I can use this person in this position or this role. So KBR really values its employees and want to keep them in some capacity. And I think that's important where the military person has been in that contract for two, four, six, eight, ten 10 years, and they know they have a guaranteed job. In the contracting world, things change. And KBR has put steps in so we can still retain those good folks. And that's William, good advice. Yeah, go I'm ahead. sorry, go ahead, Lindy. Yeah, Lindy, this is William. Um, so. I know that I just transitioned and, and when we talk about timelines, um, Joe had great advice right there. And I've also got a little bit of advice or a little bit of a lesson learned from my end. I only started, um, you know, building my network. Of course, I have uh, had a small network built while I was in the military for 22 years, but I never really, you know, sat down with LinkedIn and really sat down and tried to build a, uh, a civilian network that where I'm going to go look for jobs. And so I really wish I would have started more than 12 months out like joe said you know you get the 14 15 months out really start hitting the ground running building this network and building those connections especially with recruiters of companies that you're looking at and start doing that just laying that foundation so that when you do transition you're already lined up with the job and it makes you your stress and your family's stress just that that much less I love that. And just a reminder, this is an interactive webinar. So if you have questions that we're going, folks, I've seen the ones that are popping in, type them into the question panel on the right hand side of your screen. Um, our panelists here would love to answer any of your questions as we're going through. So that was a question that came in. This is the hot topic. I should have warned you guys. Somebody was going to ask, um, does the Skillbridge program have remote options available? And maybe, I don't know, Shamika or, or somebody could speak to the broader kind of what does the remote hiring lands landscape look like? Um, at uh, at KBR. I can take the first piece of that if you'd like. Yes, I was actually going to defer to you, Luke. Go ahead. Yeah, so um, so there's a couple of different options when you're talking Skillbridge, right? As far as location, um, me for example, I, I'm I'm actually located right outside of Dayton, Ohio, uh, right Patterson Air Force Base in Dayton. So, uh, but we do have a big uh, KBR hub, you know. 10 minutes from my house. So uh, I am 100% remote. I'm sitting here in my basement right now, um, but I actually have an iPad that I need to go pick up tomorrow at the KBR hub in Beaver Creek. So I'm going in there. If I ever needed some some type of support, IT equipment or any, anything like that, I can always go in. Um, but also there's a lot of other opportunities for remote. Uh, the, the best thing I can offer is if you go to our website, kbr.com and you go on our careers tab, right? and you see opportunities in the search bar, right now there's probably close to 2000 jobs on there. If you look at our search bar and just type in remote, I did this maybe a week ago, so don't hold me to it, but there's probably gonna be around 200 different remote opportunities in there. So don't go in there and use the filter and click Huntsville, Alabama or you know, Pax River, just type remote in the search location and you'll see about 200 different opportunities where we don't have the flexibility for a remote position is typically if you're doing some type of ts stuff and you have to go on site with the customer if you have to go work at the base and work in a skiff well it's going to be hard to do that from your house right so a lot of it is case by case but also one thing i would like to point out is i've had a lot of individuals who are retiring from let's say off at uh off at air force base in nebraska right 
and they're retiring from there. And sometimes where it gets tricky is being able to provide the skill bridge service member that's participating in the program, get them there uh, for them to get their training plan acceptance letter to where they can get their orders generated, right? Because that's what's going to kind of slow everything down. If your orders don't get generated, and then that's going to slow down the TMO. Now it's getting ready to be PCS season. So you might have a skill bridge all lined up, but you're doing it from where you're currently stationed. But we know you're not staying at off at Nebraska, for example, when you retire, because you're moving to Dayton, Ohio, where you are from and your family's from. So you're moving back there. So we would just have a conversation with the hire manager and just say, hey, look, you know, this individual would work remotely while they're in Skillbridge because they're in Offit, but also they're 100 percent relocating to Dayton. So if they need to come in here, they can. But there's that's where just you have a conversation. It's it's not one way, you know, uh, one way, you know, it's, it's a collective effort. So whatever works for you is we'll make sure that we can if we can, we'll we'll apply it and, and help make in a good partnership. Luke, who told you I'm from Omaha, Nebraska? Fun fact. Are you? I am, I am. Who knew? Off at Air Force Base, near and dear to my heart. Although Army is still my favorite branch. I won't hold the Air Force against you, though, Luke. It's <laughs> well, I, I used an example of somebody who I partnered with. He, we, we partnered with him through the Hiring Our Heroes program, and that's exactly what he did. I think he had an IT or cybersecurity background, and that's what he did. He, he worked from off it. And and then I think it was last summer where they were able to get the kids out of school and relocate to Dayton. So whatever it is, whatever we got to do, if if we can do it, we'll make it happen. Awesome. Yeah, and a couple of questions came in specific to you, Luke. I know somebody asking, hey, is there KBR have a skill bridge program in the Fort Bragg area? It sounds like there are a lot of different folks, different places. But do you want to highlight any specific um, regions or is it best just look on the website and start networking or? Yeah, I, I would probably refer them to or direct them to the website just because there's so many different opportunities. We're, you know, we're all over, we're in Dayton, Ohio, Huntsville, Alabama, Patuxent River, uh, Maryland. We're in Chantilly, Virginia, the DMV area, a lot in Jacksonville, Florida. There's, there's so many different locations like Detroit, Michigan. There's a big um, like logistics hub up there to where um, there's so many different possibilities. Plus, now you got to start thinking overseas too, because we partnered with two or three different individuals and got them in a skill bridge overseas. And then they just we just hire them and they stay over there. So if you see a, a requisition online and you're like, hey, I know I'm qualified to do this position. Well, send me, you know, get with me offline, but you can send me your resume, send me the rec number, send me your skill bridge dates, and then I'll get it over to the hiring manager and to the recruiter. And, you know, we can we can make it happen. Awesome. One more for you, Luke, and then I promise to spread the love around a little bit. So I had a question, and maybe this is kind of a good time to kind of give a little bit of a once over the SkillBridge program, which I probably should have done a little bit more at the beginning of the call. So who is actually eligible for SkillBridge, and does KBR have any specific requirements? And then what Abel asks is, as a veteran, are you still able to do SkillBridge? And maybe maybe somebody else on the call, too, can also kind of highlight Obviously, KBR, a huge company with a huge swath of opportunities, not just SkillBridge. We're highlighting that as one of, of many things that are out there for veterans. But talk SkillBridge eligibility and then broader veteran hiring op options. Sure. So I'll, I'll take the first piece of that. So as far as who can participate in SkillBridge, so if you're not familiar with what SkillBridge is, it's basically a, it's a, it's the Department of Defense program uh, that in 2006, 2007, when we started downsizing in, 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 uh, from Iraq and Afghanistan, a lot of the service members were coming home and they weren't prepared to transition out. So Congress said, hey, we got to find a way to better help our uh, service members as they transition out. So they created the SkillBridge program and went live in about 2012, early 2013. And what happened was a lot of companies like KBR caught on and said, hey, this is a great program because the catch is while you're participating in the SkillBridge program, you're still getting 100% of your military benefits. So the reason you would want to participate in it is because you get to do an internship with a company with hopes that there's going to be a job opportunity at the end. So then you're still you're you're going to work for this company, still get all your military pay, and then you're going to complete the program, retire, go into uh, terminal leave status. And and we all know once you start terminal leave status, you're eligible to become an employee. So then we can hire you. Um, so if you're not an 
if you're not currently in the military, then there's not any benefit for you to do the program because you're not going to get paid by the military because you're not currently in. Right. I think and there was another piece if somebody else wanted to jump in there. Yeah, could somebody else that's on the line today maybe give us a bit of an overview about veteran hiring at KBR um, and why, you know, just in general, I, I throw you under the bus, Will, because you're, you're newest to the family, but I'd be happy to have anybody chime in on that. Why is kind of KBR a great employer for, you know, transitioning service members? No, and this I'm not scared to take that. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll just give a little piece. So the with me transitioning, I can tell you um, that the just like I said a while ago, the reason that it was so easy for me to do is because KBR is so veteran friendly. And another reason that it's KBR is amazing whenever it comes to the the transition point of I'm leaving the military, so I'm leaving this thing where I'm you know I'm serving my country, I'm doing big things with the Department of Defense, um, and if you look at what KBR does, it really does line up with a lot of the things that you did in the military, except now you're going to do it as a, as a civilian. So that was really, you know, that was what was pivotal for me. Um, greasing the rails on, on finding a, a great job was to be able to use my skills that I learned in the military. And even if you wanted to do a career change, you've still learned basic skills, leadership. You've learned all this, all this stuff in the military that's just going to really fit in like a puzzle piece with KBR. And that's, uh, I, that's why I love this company so much. Hey, Lindy, this is Joe. I want to jump in and add a little I'm bit more. sorry. Go ahead, Joe. So a lot of our contracts, a lot of our things are near military installations. So I've been a Navy recruiter for KBR where I specifically hired just Navy, prior service Navy individuals. I've worked on Air Force programs, and then I've worked at on a Marine program as well. So as a candidate, what you should look at is where does KBR do work that supports your branch of service? And then look at how you fit into that piece of the puzzle. That would be the best advice because as the Air Force programs, 95% of the people we hired were Air Force. We all spoke the same language. We all went through the same process and it was just a smooth transition when an Air Force member came in because of those acronyms, because of those things that you've learned and grown up in the service, the same way can be said about the Army, the Navy, and the Marine Corps. And I think Shamika, did you have something to say on that too? Yeah, I was just gonna add um, to that. I believe that with KBR, we have a lot of leaders um, as well as employees in the workforce that are prior veterans that understand, um, I guess, the life that we lived prior to, um, and then transitioning into the civilian world. So it just makes it a, a an easier transition, in, in my opinion, um, working for us um, in that aspect. It's, it's kind of, it's, it's a natural transition is what I like to call it. And I love that. And that's a good time you ask, why do you wanna work for KBR? The fact that they are all, speaking on top of one another and everyone has something to contribute, you get a little nervous if you're on a call and no one can answer that question. So it's a good sign that everybody on the call today has um, a lot of positive to say about KBR and especially about KBR as a veteran friendly employer. Um, so I have a kind of a question that I wanna do round robin style. So I'm gonna go down the line and kind of ask everybody, um, if you could transition all over again, what is something that you would do differently or what advice would you give to somebody that um, you know maybe we haven't already shared today? So again, I'm gonna start with you on that Shamika. I actually think the team touched on um, a lot of the high points and what one needs to do to transition into the civilian workforce. But uh, most importantly, I would say um, to research the companies that you're interested in, um, connecting with the recruiters at the companies that you're interested in. And then after you do that connection to make sure um, that you have a resume um, that you can share with the team uh, and making sure that you have a profile created on the website. It makes it an easier process to get your information over to the hiring managers in that aspect. The so same question to you, Luke, if you could do it over again, what piece of advice would you wanna to share to folks? Well, if I could go back in time, I, I actually, uh, one may will be my one year retirement date. So I'm coming up on my first year, full year as a civilian, which has been wonderful. Um, 
So with that being said, some things that I would pass along to the transitioning service members is um, have meaningful conversations with individuals who recently got out of the military. If anybody on this call hasn't already found me, Will, Joe, Shamika, Mac on uh, any of the social media platforms, LinkedIn, whatever it may be, please do reach out to us, connect with us um, and ask us questions because a lot of us just recently transitioned. So that's one way that you can have a meaningful conversation. Um, leverage social media. I think Mac touched on it. Leverage social media. If you want to work for KBR, well, partner and connect and follow 50 of the employees that work for KBR, right? See what we're posting. Start getting a feel for the environment. Uh, go to our website, check out everything, right? And get familiar with Teams and Zoom uh, and some of these apps that you're going to use because you could possibly have your interview um, over the internet. It might not be face-to-face, -face, you know. My interview was over Teams. Uh, so if you're not prepared how to use those and then you're, you know, you're, you're getting ready for an interview, you, you might not be very comfortable and then the interview might not go well. So a little bit of practice, if you will. And then um, a couple more here. Do not wear your uniform during your interview. Um, if you have a call with me, if with any company, anybody, whoever it is, be yourself. All right. Like they want to see who Luke is, not who Sergeant Bister is, because that is great and they're thankful, but that's in the past. We're looking forward, right? So um, definitely do not wear your uniform. And last but not least, if you're not prepared, if you're running late, and you're kind of fumbling around. The recruiter, I can assure you, these recruiters that I work with at KBR, and I know there's a lot of really, really good recruiters just out there in general, they're gonna be able to realize that you're not prepared for the meeting. So if you're not, and you're not ready, and maybe the Teams or Zoom's link won't work, or you don't have your notes in front of you, or whatever it may be, if you need to reschedule the meeting, I recommend just rescheduling it instead of trying to fumble through the meeting. Hey, I feel like this whole webinar was a test, Luke, but you all passed because you're all still on the line. So I think this is this is the this is the test of our resilience. You know, when when bad things happen in the interview process, and they will, um, if mm -hmm. if an interview doesn't go as you expected, or something happens and you weren't prepared for the question, it's a good chance to do better next time um, and to and to up your game. And so um, so yeah, I appreciate all of the all the folks on the line, all the folks. Um, <laughs> who attended who attended the webinar and our panelists because you have passed the clearance jobs test for working through the resilience. So the same same piece of um, kind of asking advice from you, Robert, what would you do if you could go back and do the process differently or advice you would give to someone else going through the transition? Um, the, the advice that, I, that rings uh, true to me is uh, dress for success and set yourself up for success. Um, Luke did mention the uniform. Um, go to these hiring events. Go to the the virtual hiring events. Um, but go go there to to impress that recruiter. Uh, I'm not saying you have to go in a full suit or whatever, but you know something nice, casual. Um, let let them know who you are. Um, and then if you have time while you're transitioning, use the free military credentialing uh, that they have out there. So if you know you're going into a position, let's just say cybersecurity, you need that 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 security plus certification. Get that out, get that knocked out out of the way prior to getting out of the army. Start aligning yourself for that civilian uh, sector job uh, when you, especially when you know you fall short of a, either a degree or certifications to get your foot in the door. Get those knocked out prior to uh, exiting the, the military if you have time. Awesome. And I know this is fresh for you, Will, and you kind of already answered this question two or three different times, but let's go again. So what advice would you give to someone who's getting ready to transition out? Yeah, and it's it's something that I wish that um, that I would have had more advice on whenever I was getting out. Um, but I can tell you that there's two things that, that I can say. Start early, get that, get that uh, networking, get that base, get that foundation laid before you before you get out have that plan and then secondly take a breath we all know that it's a stressful time every one of the recruiters on here is a uh, is a vet and we are happy to help out whether it's a you know something in you know going on you have a question about you know personally transitioning out of the military or if it has to do with the job with kbr we're here to help and uh we want you guys to uh, to lean on the things that that we've done and and our lessons learned 
Awesome. And last but absolutely not least, Joe. <laughs> Thank you so much. So mine is twofold. First is have someone review your resume. Take a look at it because before you talk to the recruiter, before you do an interview, we're going to review your resume and we're going to look for how your qualifications meet our expectations. And if it's a good fit, we're going to reach out and call you because we want to know more about you before we send you over to the hiring manager. So I think that's the first thing. The second thing is be selective in how many jobs you apply for. As recruiters, we can see, and I'll, take, I'll give an example. We've had one person apply for 234 jobs within KBR. Now, did they make 234 resumes? No, they had one resume tailored to themselves and not to the job. So tailor your resume, your cover letter to the job you're looking for. And if I see someone has applied for 234 jobs, are they really interested in this one? Or did they just throw out a bunch of apply, 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 and hope something sticks? We want someone just as passionate about KBR as we are to come join us. Yeah, that's that's what you call a jack of all trades, but perhaps a master of none. So um, absolutely. Yeah. So I appreciate your your advice here. I know we have some more slides about KBR vision and values. Shamika, did you want to speak to any of these or Joe before we kind of wrap up and and close up the lines? Do we do we have some thoughts here? KBR you know, Lindy, if, if you wouldn't mind, I'd, I'd like to take uh, just a little bit of time to to talk about, you know, who we are and our vision. So it, within KBR, um, of course, and I'll just give a little brief overview here is we deliver science, technology and engineering solutions to governments and companies around the world. And that's what's great about moving from a, a military position to KBR is you're still going to be dealing with things that have to do with national security, space, energy security, transition, climate change, and, all, and a whole bunch more. And KBR is right there at the front of that. And the way that we get to there is just like you see on the screen right there. We have a vision. Um, and our vision is to bring the best and the brightest to deliver technology and solutions that help our customers accomplish their most critical missions and objectives. In doing so, we strive to create a better and safer and more sustainable work world. And everything we do is centered around the people of KBR, our customers, our stakeholders, communities, um, our amazing employees. But on that vision, we have, and just like in the military, we have our core values, which we call our, our one KBR values. And then I'll just go through them briefly. We value our people. We've talked about that a lot on here and our people are at the heart of everything that we do. We deliver, we're always, we're, we're a trusted partner with our clients. We're uncompromising in our commitment to deliver what they need for the mission. And then we're people of integrity. This one hits at home because that's one of the core values in the Air Force. And if you don't have integrity, you can't go anywhere. Um, and I can tell you right now that the people of KBR um, will never sacrifice our integrity. So we're that's always at the forefront. And then we empower. We empower our people to, just like I talked a while ago, I mean, we give them the reins to, to be creative. We give them the supportive culture that they need to be proactive and to adapt to change. And then finally, we have we're a team of teams. And, the, and what I mean by we're a team of teams, um, and I'm going to wrap it up right here, is if you'll go to that next slide, you'll see the teams that we're part of. And you'll you'll actually get to see that we have four different business units that that are wrapped around the government solutions, defense systems, engineering, national security solutions, readiness and sustainment, which I'm a part of and very proud to be a part of, and then science and space. And all of these things are, or all of these business units um, work to, to that one common goal of KBR. We are one KBR and we stand on our one KBR values. I love it. I would have been, it would have been a shame to conclude and not to, and not get, get that message across. Um, so yeah, we'll send a link to the slides out to attendees. We encourage you to follow up um, and to learn more. Did you have, uh, Shamika, did you want to go over the community slides here? Those are actually, um, Those are looks, mine. but we, we can, if we have the time to do so. Yeah, I, yeah, I think we have a few minutes. I wanted to get to the, the ERGs and, and see if there were any questions around those. Yep, we can do that one also as well. Yeah, so can you kind of talk a little about the Armed Forces community at KBR? I know it ties into sure. kind of how we're talking about KBR as a veteran-friendly employer. 
Yep, I'm actually um, a part of the Armed Forces Community ERG um, here with the company, and it's um, it's actually a fairly new one. We launched globally last year, um, and I became a site lead for this particular group uh, probably about a month or so ago. Um, it, it does help us connect the internal veteran employees um, that were or are still a part of the military community. Um, it's supported heavily by our leadership team here. Um, they believe in the importance of having, you know, the different ERGs, but especially this Armed Forces Group. Um, it's actually supported by our Government Solutions President, uh, Byron Bright. He's one of our sponsors um, for this particular resource group. But the vision um, for this particular group is to expand on our ex inclusive and diversity efforts within the organization while also providing um, an informative and supportive and welcoming environment for all of its members. Um, our core values, it definitely reflects this initiative, which just so happens to include support, inclusive, and commitment to all of its members. Um, I'm really looking forward to what the group is gonna do with collaborating, connecting with all of the members globally. Um, we have some events coming up. Um, Memorial Day, I think, will be a kickoff for Houston. Um, so it, a good time to be a part of KVR, um, a good time to see, you know, all of the initiatives that we're taking to increase our membership and participation, as well as the outreach and fellowship events within the different communities. I love it. I think that community feeling really makes a big difference. I know, you know, you've talked a lot about KVR SkillBridge and as a veteran friendly employer, and it really makes a difference. I think candidates can experience that difference when they're, when they're onboarding somewhere, when they, are interacting folks with you guys who understand the military community and understand that tr transition piece. Um, so I know we're on our slide here, kvr.com forward slash careers. I know they've mentioned it a few different times. You can search by area, by region, by career opportunities. Certainly reach out to the panelists if you have any questions and you wanna learn more. Um, and again, I loved Joe's advice to not just apply to 234 positions, um, but look for really those ones that are gonna be a great match for you. As Shamika said, create a profile, have a robust profile created so that their um, sourcing and recruiting team can find you and match you with the right positions. Was there anything else we didn't get to in the Q&A that you wanted to go over today, panelists? It was fantastic. Believe it or not, we all had fun here today. Um, you've all learned a little bit more about KBR careers. I'm so sorry that the webcams didn't work for um, our panelists today, but their their audio sounded fantastic. Um, and I am going to invite all of them to join us with clearance jobs for a LinkedIn Live soon, so you can hopefully connect with them there um, and learn more and actually see their see their faces. But for now, at least you saw their slides, you saw their pictures. So thank you to Carrie and Bailey and the team at KBR for putting those together so that we could um, see a bit of a picture as we chat with you today. And again, if you have questions. Um, any of the attendees here, type them in the chat, follow up the recruiters afterwards, and we would love to connect you with great opportunities at KBR. Thank you again, everyone, for attending today's webinar.